thank you guys for tuning in to Tag Church here in Little Rock, Arkansas. We pray that this message will truly be a blessing for you today. If you would like to partner with us financially, you can do so by visiting us at tagchurch.net. And also, if you have any prayer requests, please don't hesitate to send it to the email address on your screen because we would love to partner with you in prayer. So, I hope you're ready for a word from the Lord today. Let's get right into it, and God bless you. Are you ready for Revival Weekend? Two weeks from today, from this weekend, Saturday night and Sunday morning with Pastor Kim Owens. We have uh, many ways that we're getting the word out about this. Facebook, social media is a big one. So when you see that video uh, advertised, share, share, share. We've got, we've got two weeks. Share it all week, all, every day, as much as you can. And then also out at the Welcome Center are invite cards. If you would like to take a, a few of these or as many as you're willing to hand out and invite your family, invite your neighbors, uh, you can pick those up out at the Welcome Center. Take your Bibles this morning and open them again to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk. I know, that's a funny book, isn't it? Chapter number two, Habakkuk chapter number two. Habakkuk chapter number two. How many of you are here last week? Say amen. amen. If you were not here last week, we have a Discover Tag booklet we want to put in your hands. I've got the box right down here. Haven, grab that box from underneath you. Could I get a couple guys, ushers, just come help me grab a, a stack of those papers and those books? And uh, if you need one, if you forgot yours or uh, you weren't here last week, wave at these ushers and they will put that into your hand. Uh, we looked at vision. We started looking at vision last Sunday and didn't quite finish. So today we're going to complete that. And our goal is to get you out of here a little early today. Uh, that way you can beat the weather that's coming in. It has not started, not supposed to start till after 12. Uh, but I know many of you have come from different areas of the central Arkansas region. So we want to uh, make sure you get home safely before uh, anything does happen. Let me take a poll. How many of you are excited about snow? Wave at me. All right. How many of you are not excited at all? Wave at me. How many of you could care less? All right. It was about 50-50 on the excited and the not excited. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm praying for a total of 15 inches this week, okay? 15 inches. So uh, I've, already, I've already got it mapped out. We're going to get at least six today and tomorrow, maybe eight here in Maumelle. I'm praying for my city. And then um, we'll get the rest of it on Wednesday, okay? The good news is it's going to warm up next weekend and it'll all go bye-bye, right? Uh, so uh, let's, um, I don't know what God does with this because you're praying, Gary's praying it doesn't do that. I'm praying it does do that. Um, I don't know what God does with these kind of prayers. It just, uh, I really don't know. I guess that's why we're supposed to pray the will of God. And uh, God created snow, so we'll just leave it at that, okay? Sorry. Let's get to the message, right? So we can get you out of here on time. I want to read this passage again. We opened up with it last week, but it's so powerful. It's one that we don't read a lot. Sometimes maybe just once a year at the beginning of the year, or maybe when you're reading through the Bible, uh, it's not every day that people just wake up in the morning and go, I think I'm going to read the book of Habakkuk today. Uh, so most of the time you maybe only see this when you're reading through the Bible once a year, but it's just powerful. These, these three verses are really powerful, especially as we uh, look forward to what God is saying and what God is doing in our church. Habakkuk 2 verse number 1 says, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart. Are we there? And I will watch to see. Everybody say watch to see. How many of you know sometimes you can watch and not see? You can look and not see. But he says, I will watch and see or to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm corrected. Then the Lord answered me and he said, write the vision and make it plain 
on tablets. What we've done for you this year is we have wrote the vision and we've made it plain, not on a tablet, but on a booklet that's in your hand today uh, that we are using for new members in the future. But we wanted to bring everybody back to the same page, get everybody in unity. And he says to write it, make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. And we looked at that passage last week and we looked at two different meanings, two different things that could mean he that, uh, he, he can, he that uh, may run who reads it. And then verse three, uh, and this is what I want to get to today, says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Write the vision, make it plain on tablets. The purpose of God telling us to write the vision and to make it plain so that everybody who reads it can run with it, the purpose is that God wanted everyone to know the vision and more importantly, he wants everyone to get on board with what the vision is. Everyone say, get on board. And we're going to talk about that throughout the rest of the message today. What does it mean to get on board with the vision of this house? God wants the vision to be plain. He wants it to be written down for one purpose, and that is so you and me can get on board. Now, if you look at the book here, we went through a lot of it last week, and we're going to touch on just a couple more things in it and maybe hit a few things that uh, uh, we ran past real fast last time. But the one thing that we can't overlook is on the front cover of the book, and I want us to do what we did last week, and it's on the screen, I think, if everybody will just read the vision out loud with me, and uh, you'll see some of them words are bold, so let's really make sure and, and put an impact. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's hit those hard because they... Uh, identify who we are. This is the DNA of Tag Church. Read it with me. Tag Church is a spirit-filled church marked by the flames of revival resulting in a place where truth is preached, passion is ignited, and where every person is engaged in bringing others into this experience. That is our vision. That's what we've written down. It's our DNA. It's who we are. It's our DNA to be spirit filled. It is our vision to be marked by the flames of revival. How many of you are marked by revival? Are there any products of revival in this house today? And we want to be a place that truth is preached. And we talked about that and we talked about passion being ignited and how all of us need to be engaged in bringing others into this experience. Now, if you'll turn in the booklet again to page number four real quick, page number four, where the mission and values is stated, you'll see the mission there again, and then there at the bottom or the, the half of the page is our values. And we talked about these last Sunday, our values are worship and missions and relationship and discipleship and revival. And we talked about how worship's our lifestyle and evangelism is our mandate and relationship relationships are our building block and discipleship is our ministry and how revival is our culture. Where I want you to connect some dots uh, of what we did last week and also where we're going today is that we have structure in place to be able to fulfill all five of these core values, if you want to call them, here at Tag Church. That means everything that we do as a ministry, as a church, everything we exist for must filter through one of those five core values. Now, many things we do will filter through a couple of them, maybe even all of them, but everything must filter through all five of them. That's the structure that we are laying. That's the, that's the structure we are even relaying in some cases to make sure everything filters through worship and missions and relationship and discipleship and of course revival. And uh, how many of you believe it's important that we stay focused on why we exist? 
Because once we lose the focus, then we start going in so many different directions. And yeah, we may have good programs and good ministries and we may have some good things going on, but we could just be doing a lot of stuff and making no impact on the kingdom. God has called us to make an impact and the way he's designed us to do that is he's marked this house to be a house of revival and to be a place where he will pour out his spirit so that lives are constantly being transformed. Can you say amen? So as we look at ministries and as we look at uh, opportunities to serve and as we look at all the things that we would call our structure here, I want you to begin thinking, okay, what's the purpose of that? What is the purpose of having women warriors every Tuesday morning? What purpose, what, what core values does that fulfill? Well, it fulfills revival because it's a huge prayer ministry. These ladies know how to pray. Amen. Come on, men. Say amen for the ladies today. And thank Thank God we got some praying prayer warriors in this place on Tuesday. So it fulfills that. It fulfills discipleship because Nancy Hastings is one, I mean, she is a great Bible teacher, one of the greatest you'll ever sit under. And uh, so it fulfills discipleship. Of course, it fulfills relationship as ladies are able to connect. Now, I'm not going to take every ministry of the church, everything that we do, and tell you how it fulfills these. I want you to begin to think about it, though, because here's the thing. So many people will go to church and all they'll ever do is come on Sunday mornings. I expected a better response. Y'all are the crowd that got out when a blizzard's on its way. I mean, y'all are the crowd that's like, I don't care what's happening at noon. I'm going to be in church today. Right? Amen. There you are. There you are. Amen. I know the 50% praying to get snow sitting there going, I'm, I'm, I'm just mad and upset. That's okay. Amen. But some people, their entire church life is just coming on Sundays. And that's a good start. (laughs) If we could get everybody here every Sunday, we wouldn't have enough seats to fill. I mean, I'm telling you, if everybody that calls this their home was just here every Sunday, we'd be packed out going into a few services every week. That would be a good start just to get people to church on Sunday. And then, and then after that, uh, the second thing you might want to shoot for is Wednesday night push. How many of you, after I officially shared our direction, are excited where we're going on Wednesday nights at, in Tag Church? Amen. It's different. It's outside of the box, I know. But it's going to be, I believe, the most important service of the year or of the week. <laughs> well, the way this year's going, maybe of the year. Who knows? <laughs> but it's so important. Prayer is important, and you can see Wednesday Night Push fulfills some of them values. But what we want to challenge and encourage you to do is start looking how in my life, how in my family, with my children, with my spouse, how can we fulfill as a family or as an individual these values in our own lives and in our own home? How can we go further than just Sunday morning or even just Wednesday night? What can we do to get plugged in and hear me, get on board. So a lot that you see throughout this brochure is the, it's the foundation to support the values that we have here at Tag Church. If you were to go over to page number eight, and we looked at these on pages eight through 11, it's where we spent a bulk of our time last Sunday. And and if you missed it, you just need to go watch it. Uh, And it's important if you call this your home church that you do watch Vision Sunday. Uh, But but, um, so so I I don't have time to go through all of pages eight through 11 again, but, but you'll see under these service and ministry opportunities, what you're seeing is a whole list of things that basically you could say, this is how we accomplish our values. These are things that help us uh, accomplish our core values here at Tag Church. And so you've got things like we referenced a minute ago, Wednesday night push. And at the bottom of page eight, you've got revival nights or revival weekends that we've already showed a video about. And it's going to be a big part of our structure in 2021 on a monthly basis to have something that will help us sustain the move of God. And if you go over to page number nine, you see things like, uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what, just go on to page 10. On page number 10, you see life stage groups. Everybody see page 10? 
These are life stage groups, and we just kind of ran uh, past them real fast last week. And, and, uh, but let me just take a minute or two here to, 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 to kind of give a shout out to these. These are, these are uh, groups or ministries within our church that are uh, they're, they're age specific. They're, they're life stage groups, if you will. We have the Harbor, the Oasis, and Joy. These doesn't include our Elevate and our Tag Kids and Tag Tots and tag toddlers and all of those life stages. These are adult groups and I want to challenge you this year Tag Church, you watching online, I want to challenge you to go beyond just the Sunday morning and even the Wednesday night and get involved in other ministries specifically get involved in a life stage group. Now, the Joy Group meets every month. The other groups right now meet quarterly, and uh, they used to meet monthly. The Harbor used to meet monthly, but it's one restructure we've made because we're bringing revival weekends in every month. We understand we can't ask you to be up here every Friday and Saturday night. We get that. So, you know, when you, when you, when you bring in one thing, you got to move another. So, so, but these are so important to who we are. They're so important to our DNA. I shared this last week that you can come on Sundays all year long, but until you move from the sanctuary and get plugged into a ministry or get into a live stage group, you're really not going to make meaningful relationships. And you may say, well, I'm not really going for that. Well, you should be. It's something we value here. God didn't create us to do this alone. There's no lone rangers at Tag Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. He wants all of us to get on board with the vision of the house. So you can learn more about these ministries. And uh, we actually had a whole bunch. We, the, uh, next weekend was supposed to be Harbor and Oasis. But because of the recent COVID outbreak, we're postponing those. So, but, but be watching, be listening, and be a part of those. And, and we looked here on page number 11. We, we gave a big plug about Lifeline. Anybody excited about Lifeline coming back to Tag Church? And Tracy King, where are you, Tracy? I knew you'd be here, Tracy. I knew you'd be here. Tracy King, our new discipleship director. Somebody, somebody said, welcome to Tag Church. She's not new. <laughs> She's been here a long time. But Tracy's going to knock it out of the park. And we're so excited about Lifeline. And I mean, more class. Was anybody at more on Tuesday night? My word. My word. I said my word. I mean, we went a level. We went another level. Raising up, <clears throat> excuse me, forerunners of revival. So I'm just kind of skimming through some of this, but here's where I want to get to today. Go to page 12 and 13. It says, I am a church member. I am a church member. I already announced earlier that Discover Tag has been rescheduled for March the 7th. So if you're not a church member, you still have time to join this round. And it's our heart and desire that everybody that calls Tag Church their home church takes that step called membership because membership equals commitment. Membership means what you're communicating when you become a member is you're communicating to the pastor and everybody else that I'm not just here to hang out, I'm here to get on board. See, a lot of people hang out. You don't get away with that in a church our size. Right, Dr. Wendy? Reminds me of when you first came to tag and your testimony. A lot of people go to big churches because they can hide. I mean, you don't have to do anything. You go to a big church. You can just let everybody, you can just sit back and hide. You can't do that in a church this size. Uh Uh-uh. You may try for a little while, but somebody's going to sign you up in the nursery before long. You will only hide for so long, and they're going to be saying, we need you in the nursery. Need me. (laughs) Amen. See, got the family pastor's wife over here. She's amen in me now. Whoo, I feel the anointing. Let me get my hanky out. Glory. Preach this for you, Kelly. I feel it. Amen. Everybody say, I am a church member. I am a church member. I want us to quickly look at these six steps to church membership. 
These are steps to membership. These are uh, from Tom Rainer's book called I Am a Church Member. We have these books available in the Coffee Connection store. If you would like one, speaking of the store, if you didn't get a push hoodie yet, they'll be available right after service really quick. Uh, if you need a medium and large, we sold out, but we've got more on the way. Uh, so hold off a week or two for those. But this is a great book. If you join the church, you're given this book. It's a gift to you. You're asked to read it. It's really a required read. So if you're a church member, you You've already read this book. Everybody nod and say, yes, I've already read this. Okay. All right. Nope. Some of y'all looking over like, I ain't lying in the house of God. Amen. <laughs> but this is a powerful book on what it really means to be a member of a church. Okay. And uh, so let's look at these. They're inside your booklet here on pages 12 and 13. And I don't have time to preach all of them. I'm going to spend, uh, I'm going to hit all six real quick. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to finish the rest of our time together looking at the first step, step number one today. But step number one, just real quick, I will be a functioning church member. Let's come back to that here in just a moment. Go to step number two, I will be a unifying church member. I'll be a unifying church member. Chase, would you mind coming and bring this down? I want to come down. Thanks for your help. I will be a, un everybody say unifying. unifying. Amen, unifying. How many of you know today that it takes work to be a unifying church member. Because when you get this many people in the same place, you got a whole, thank you, sir, you got a whole bunch of opinions, thoughts, preferences, desires, backgrounds, and everything in between. Amen. But what we have to do is be willing to be a unifying church member. Our goal is to come together. Our goal is to be one. Friend, listen, revival is not going to be sustained in a house where there is not unity. Matter of fact, Pastor Dennis and I have talked about this for a few years now, and that is this. We believe one of the greatest things that has sustained revival as long as it has here has been the great unity of this house. Because once you get disunity, you're going to lose revival real quick. There's a, there's a passage in Psalms that talks about you, oil dripping down Aaron's beard and how precious it is. And it's, it, 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 the unity is like, uh, like, like precious oil. See, unity produces oil. Unity produces anointing. I do believe that unity will produce revival. In the upper room, the first revival of the church in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says they were all in one accord. And that wasn't a Honda Accord. They were all unified. They, what were they in unit? What, what, what was the unity? It was around their values. The unit, they were one in prayer. I mean, they, listen, it wasn't one person praying in a microphone and everybody else sitting back going, well, that's a pretty good prayer. Amen. They were all in unity, all praying together. I believe they were in unity and worship in that room. I believe the unity was around an expectation that the Holy Ghost was going to come because Jesus had already told them, go to the upper room and you wait until the promise of the Father has come. I believe there was great unity around the expectation of fire that was going to fall in that place. Hear me today. We may never get in unity around what temperature the sanctuary should be. We may never get in unity around whether or not we should put push letters up on the stage or not. Some of you think they're ugly. Some of you think they're genius. We may never get in unity on whether I should preach from a pub table, which I have no idea why I'm doing, or from a pulpit. If the pulpit's big, if it's little, we may never get in unity on the color of the carpet, but we better be in unity around the vision, around the expectation, around what God has marked this place to be. Come on. So unity, unity means the high things must come down. Unity means pride must come down. Amen. Unity says I'm going to die to something. So who's got this pledge that's going to read it today? Sister Paula. Got this microphone right here. I want you, you don't have to read it with her, but follow along as she reads. I, I've got a different church member going to read each pledge. And this is what we're going to ask you to do. We're going to ask you to pledge this, not by raising your right hand, but by living out these words. Go ahead, Paula. I will seek to be a source of unity in my church. I know there are no perfect pastors, staff, or other church members, but neither am I. Amen. I will not be a source of gossip or dissension. One of the greatest contributions I can make 
is to do all I can in God's power to help keep the church in unity for the sake of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Give Paula a good round of applause. I like this. If you have your pens, underline that last sentence where it says, one of the greatest contributions I can make is to do all I can in God's power to help keep the church in unity for the sake of the gospel. <clears throat> and then circle and highlight the word gossip and dissension. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Step number three, I will not let my church be about my preferences and desires. Oh, I could preach on that one. Mm -hmm. It's not going to take you very long to realize that there's people sitting around you that believe Tag Church exists for them. I'm telling you, if you it, 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 I mean, there are people, you're here today, there's people here today, some of you watching by live stream, there is mindset that we have to guard against that this whole thing is for me. This church and its ministries have been designed for me, for my family. We cannot make Tag Church about our own personal preferences and desires. We must have the attitude of Christ. Can you imagine if Christ's attitude was all about me, myself, and I? If that was his attitude, he would have never went to the cross for you and me. He, here's what it says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. I think uh, NIV or one of them says, let this attitude be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind, let this thought process, this attitude, the same one that was in Christ be in you. Who, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself Nothing taking on the appearance of a man. It says he humbled himself and he became obedient to death, even the death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. Here's what it's saying. It's saying Jesus came and he made himself nothing. And, but it says to let that mind be in you. So, so how do we respond to uh, these things in the church? We have to have the attitude of Christ. I'm going to tell you, if you sit around here long enough, there's going to be things you don't like. There's things I don't like. I know that's shocking. There's things that Crystal and I don't agree about. I, that may shock you too. <laughs> Just It is what it is, right? I know that there's just some things, the direction we're headed, it's the way we got to go, like it or not. Hear me. If you're going to get mad and get upset, get mad and upset that the glory of God's not in this place. If there's something that's going to get you, uh, rattle your cage, if, as they say, let it be that there's empty chairs around you today. If there's something that's going to bother you, let this bother you, that we don't have Little Rock saved yet. If something's going to, if something's going to disturb you, let it be that, that, that maybe service just, uh, it wasn't as powerful as it could have been. Hear me today. Those are the things that need to shake us and move us. Everything else, just let them be. Because Tag Church is not about me, myself, and I. It's not about what I prefer. It's not about what I desire. Who has this one here? Who wants who has this one? All right. Terry's going to come and read the third pledge. I will not let my church be about my preferences and desires. That is self-serving. I am a member in this church to serve others and to serve Christ. My Savior went to the cross for me. I can deal with any inconveniences and matters that just aren't my preference or style. Man, thank you, sir. Give it up for Terry today. Church member. The next one, number four, is I will pray for my church leaders. As a church member, you're committing to pray for your pastor, for your pastoral staff, for your board of deacons. 
I want to read just a quick story out of this book. I'm a church member. Listen to this. It's Thursday morning. Pastor Mike has a clear calendar. Actually, the calendar is not really clear. He set aside time to finish a sermon for Sunday. His Bible is open. Study aids are nearby. He begins to study. Then the phone rings. His assistant tells him about a car accident involving a family in the church. The ambulances are already on the way to the hospital. Mike leaves all his study material on his desk and he jumps into the car. On the way to the hospital, his assistant calls him again. The entire Godsey family of five were in the car. None are seriously hurt except Gary, the father and husband of the family. His condition is grave. Pastor Mike walks into the emergency room. I've done this many times, the same scenario. The family has just been told that their husband and father did not make it. They see their pastor and they run to him sobbing in total shock. Mike is there for them. He stays with the entire family for three hours until he's certain enough people are around to care for them. He stops by his home to see his wife and grab a quick sandwich. It's now afternoon. He's not sure if he can return to his sermon preparation, but he knows he must. He must fight the emotional exhaustion of the morning and finish the message. But as he walks back to the church, his assistant apologetically tells him that two people need to speak with him. They consider it urgent. Mike meets with the two men. One of them is the worship leader of the church. He is struggling with his ministry and he's considering giving up. For two hours, Mike listens, consoles, and attempts to encourage the staff member. The next visitor then catches Mike off guard. George is one of the key leaders in the church. Mike considers him a friend and an incredibly vital person in the overall leadership of the congregation. George struggles to speak. My wife is having an affair. There are no more words for five minutes, just tears and sobs. Mike stays with George for over two hours. They pray together and they talk about next steps. It's nearly five o'clock in the afternoon. Mike is too drained to attempt to go back to a sermon. Instead, he begins to look at his crowded email inbox. He cringes when he sees one of the senders of an email, but he cannot stop himself from opening the message. It's from one of Mike's most frequent critics in the church. She has two complaints. The first, irritation, was something he said in last Sunday's sermon. The second complaint addressed Mike's failure to visit her sister-in-law who had minor outpatient surgery yesterday. The woman's not a member of the church, and Mike knew nothing about it. Pastor Mike shuts the laptop cover, and he moves to his car slowly. He'll stop by the house to grab a quick bite to eat. Then he needs to check on the Godsey family. He'll stay with them for a while, but he must leave prior to 7.30 when he is to give the invocation for a local high school basketball game. Several people corner him at the game so he doesn't get home until after 9 o'clock. He goes to a small study in his home. He shuts the door, and he begins to cry. Gary Godsey, the father and the husband who was killed in the car accident, was Mike's best friend. This was the first chance that Mike had to grieve. All church leaders need prayer. Amen. Who's got this one? How fitting coming from a pastor. I will pray for my pastor every day. I understand that the pastor's work is never ending. His days are filled with numerous demands that bring emotions at highs and lows. He must deal with critics and he must be a good husband and a father because my pastor cannot do all things in his own power. I will pray for his strength and wisdom daily. Amen. Give it up for Pastor Curtis. Thank you, brother. Number five, I will lead my family to be healthy church members. I will lead my family to be healthy church members. Listen to me, mom and dad. If you sit at the dinner table and all you do is trash talk, Pastor Caleb and Kelly, if you just sit and say, well, you know, they're young. I've seen them make so many mistakes. 
They've really never shook my hands either. Maybe because they're always back in kids' ministry, but I'm not going to bring that one up. And all you do is talk bad about them. What you're doing is raising up future church members who are going to be nightmares to pastors because they're going to reenact what they learned sitting at the dinner table. I will pray for my church leaders. Moms and dads, when you spend time praying for Pastor Caleb and Kelly and Pastor Dwayne and Crystal and Pastor Dennis and Pastor Josh and, and Sarah, you know what you're doing is you're teaching them what it means to be a church member. I'm going to pray for them and I'm going to lead them to be healthy church members. Who's got this one? All right, Patricia. And you guys have raised healthy church members. I will lead my family to be good members of this church as well. We will pray together for our church. We will worship together in our church. We will serve together in our church, and we will ask Christ to help us fall deeper in love with this church because he gave his life for her. How many of you will lead your family to be church, healthy church members? Amen. Give it up for Patricia. And I'll just keep this one. Number six, real quick, is I will treasure church membership as a gift. We're going to close here in a moment. We skipped the first one because I wanted to come back to that one and close with that one. But I think to really understand church membership as a gift, we're going to have to go and, and see this first one because uh, if we're not careful, we will uh, consider church membership as a sense of entitlement. I pay my tithes, so I expect this. I pay my tithes, so, it, you know, it, I, it, it's kind of like the mindset of joining a country club. I pay my dues so everybody else, so somebody can mow the grass and somebody can serve me snacks and somebody can have the pool ready. I, I'm not doing any of that. That's what I pay my dues for. If you're not careful, you will view church membership as a sense of entitlement. Well, I've been here for 20 years. You're not any more important than the person who's here for their first Sunday. You're not. Well, you don't know what I give. You're not any more important than the person who has nothing to give, at least at Tag Church. Amen. Amen. There's no entitlement. Listen to me. There's no entitlement. I don't care what color your skin is. There's no entitlement. Amen. Doesn't matter if you're male, female. It doesn't, listen, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if in front of your name it says lead pastor. I teach, my kids know this and our staff knows this, that the higher up in leadership you go, the less rights you have. Right? You that are here as new people, you have more rights than I have. Because you have a right right now to just get up and go home if you want to. I don't have that right. If it starts snowing, I still have to stay and make sure this place is secured and locked up, right? I could give example after example after example. So we don't look at membership as entitlement. We look at it as a gift. Aren't you thankful that we have the gift of the church? We have the gift of the body of Christ. We have the gift of one another. Amen? This is a gift. That's why as great as live stream is for days like today when weather's going to be moving in and as great as live stream is for times like when you're sick with COVID, hear me today, live stream will never take the place of being in the body, in the house, present with your brothers and sisters because membership's a gift. Amen. And Haven's going to read this sixth pledge. This membership is a gift. When I received the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, I became part of the body of Christ. I soon thereafter identified with a local body and was baptized. Now I am humbled and honored to serve and to love others in our church. I pray that I will never take my membership for granted, but will see it as a gift and an opportunity to serve others and to be part of something so much greater than any one person or member. All right. Thank you, Haven. Give it up for Haven. All right, take your Bibles, and, and I want you to see this passage as we, um, as we close today. Ephesians chapter 4. I want you to turn there with me. Ephesians 4. I want us to just spend the next few minutes of our time on this, on, on this first uh, step to membership, which is I will be a functioning church member. Ephesians chapter 4. I will be a functioning 
Anybody know what functioning means? Anybody want to take a guess? Working. That's right. I will be a working church member. I will, if, listen, if something isn't functioning, it's not working. Amen. Anybody got a body part that's not functioning quite like it should be functioning? Right? Older we get, they start wearing out. Yeah. They quit working. As members, a step that you're going to take, a pledge you're going to make, a commitment that you have to this body and to this structure and to this vision and to our values is that I'm not just here to take a seat, but I will function. I will work. I will do my part. I'm not going to be someone that we're constantly having to you know, I, I pull along and do everything for. I'm not coming in with the mindset that I pay my tithes so everything's done for me. No, I'm going to, I'm going to function. I'm going to work. I'm going to do my part. And here's what it says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse, beginning in verse number 11. It says, And he himself, Jesus, gave some to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. He gave the church gifts called the fivefold ministry to equip you and me to function. Read on, verse 12 says, For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry... In other words, your pastor is a gift from God to you to equip you to function. Are you following this? I I know time's running out, so I ain't got time to preach it, but I've preached fivefold before. And and most of you are on board with that. So back to these things on Vision Sunday. Your pastor, fivefold ministry, your staff is here to equip you to function, to work. It says for the work. Everybody say the work. It's a four-letter word. I know we don't like it, but it's in your Bible. The work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ, verse 13, we're going to keep working until we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. Is anybody perfect here? Is there a perfect man here? None of us are perfect. That means this. We all got to keep working. We're all a work in progress and we're all going to keep pushing, keep working, keep serving, keep functioning. It says, verse 13, until we become perfect. Verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things. Everybody say, grow up. up. Turn to your name and say, grow up. That's, That's the goal, that we may grow up in all things into him who's the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, the whole body is joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share. Are you seeing this in your Bible? Where every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. What do we learn from these few verses? We learn a few things. One, all parts have to work together. We have to work, we have to function, but we have to work together. We talked about this as being a unifying church membership. We talked about how church membership is not like country club membership with a country club membership where we pay others to do the work for us. No, we all do our part. Church membership, everyone has a role. Everyone has a a purpose. And what Paul is saying here is that every part must do its part. Every part has to do its work or the whole body suffers. If you don't do your part, somebody suffers. Can you imagine if I just decided not to do my part? You're going to suffer. And it ought to be that way for all of us. If we don't do our part, somebody's going to suffer. Let me not be too repetitive, but again, as amazing as live stream is, you cannot do your part sitting at home. Come on, somebody. You cannot. I've had people say, well, we just prefer it at home. You know, it's a lot easier. No, no, no. That's a bad preference. That's putting you first. There's people suffering because you're not doing your part. It's a mindset we've got to get over if we're going to build on the values that God has given this church. We've got to all do our part or everybody suffers. If every part is not doing their part and if every part is not supplying, no matter how amazing the church is, hear me, no matter how amazing the pastor is and he's not that, or the worship is and it is amazing here, no matter how amazing uh, the services are, it does not matter because if every part's not doing their part, the whole thing fails. 
My job is to help you find your place at Tag Church so that you can function and do your part. My job is to equip you for the work of the ministry. Would you bring me that board? Now, I showed you this several years ago, and then I think I even brought it out one night in a, in a Sunday Night Life class, but I think it just it, this is a good time to bring it back again. It's been a while, and, and uh, give this visual here today. Pastor Josh, if you'll come make your way, we're going to close out with this illustration. I'm going to take it. Just keep on coming. Thank you, sir. Give it up for Chase. He's a good man. You're a good man, Chase. If this represents the work of the ministry, now think about this for a minute. What is the work of the ministry? I want to hear you talk to me. What is the work of the ministry? I need literal things, work of the ministry. Make disciples. Serving. I need, I need specifics. You guys are giving me values. Huh? Working in the nursery. That's right. If nobody works in the nursery, guess what? We have no nursery. Amen. And when you come to me and say, Pastor, what are we going to do? We ain't got people signed up. I'll say, lock the door. We ain't having a nursery. Come on. What else? Huh? Maintenance. That's right. That's ministry? You better believe it is. Cleaning. Remember all them people you pay your tithes for so they can sanitize when we all go home? Imagine if they didn't do it. Y'all are saying stuff now, but I can't hear you. Keep, keep shouting. Keep telling me. Running the live stream camera. Jared, I'm getting tired of seeing you the only one back there. Because people aren't stepping up and helping you carry the work of the ministry. Oh, no. See, all of you sitting at home enjoying it. What if we have to shut it down because we can't get volunteers? What if Jared comes to me and says, it's getting too heavy, I'm getting burnt out, Pastor. I can't get any help. My answer is going to be, shut it down. Well, it shouldn't be, Pastor. Your job is to equip people. I can't make you get on board. Oh, no. It's, oh, yeah. Greeters. Door greeters. Do we have to have door greeters? You better believe we do. 90%. There's a 90%. Listen, when people walk through these doors... Before they ever get into the sanctuary, they have already made up their mind. There's a 90% decision already been made of whether or not they'll come again based on what they experience walking through the front doors. No matter how amazing the worship is and the preaching, if they had a bad experience walking through the door, guess what? They're just sitting through the service going, I'm ready to get out of here. I ain't coming back. Doesn't matter. We could go on and on. I read a story of the pastor, a day in a pastor's life. And all the things that a pastor may juggle and handle. But how many of you know it's not the pastor's job to go visit all the sick people in every minor surgery? If the pastor does all of that, you, you, you know what you're going to get on Sunday mornings? You're going to get weak preaching. The pastor's job is to be in the study, in the Word of God, and in prayer. Read it in your Bible, Acts 6-4. They selected people to get on board. Hear me. So that the pastors could give themselves to prayer and to study right? We could go on and on with what the ministry of the church is. You can look in your brochure there and you can see, and we don't even have all the ministries listed, but if you were to turn to page number 14, you can see a whole list of ministries that, that you can serve in. And again, that's not even an exhaustive list. That's some of our just core areas of serving, of ministry in the church. There's so many more things that, that take place around here to keep this going. And here's what I've learned. When a pastor tries to juggle the work of the ministry with the word and with prayer, this is what happens. That's what happens. When a pastor is trying to do it all because that's what we pay you to do, pastor. When a pastor is trying to keep up with everything in the ministry and making sure everybody's in place and where are my volunteers and what do you mean the nursery worker didn't show up? What do you mean to me there's no safety team? I mean, I'm sitting here trying to get my focus on preaching and, and y'all bringing me these things. Listen, when, when, when we don't get on board, this is what happens. Because one person can't be everything. And one person can't do everything. You know what all this is? Really? All this is is the vision of the church. I mean, the core values, that's really what this is. This right here is 
who we are. It's the vision of Tag Church. And the vision of Tag Church is to be a spirit-filled church marked by the flames of revival, resulting in a place where truth is preached and passion is ignited and where every person is engaged in bringing others into this experience. Until you have that memorized, until you really know that, I wonder if you really know the weight of this thing. It ain't that heavy when you first handed it to me, Chase, but you know, after a while, hanging on to it, it's, it's, it's gaining some weight. This right here is the vision. I want you to see it that way. Because this right here, if this is the vision, this can't be dropped. Amen. We can't drop this. We can't. Listen to me. We can't miss this. Because without this, people perish. Without this, people die and they go to hell. So what happens? God begins to call people up to help carry the load. He calls people alongside the pastor to get on board. He calls people like staff pastors. Pastor Dennis, come up here and get on board with me. Just get up here as close to me, shoulder to shoulder as you can. Justin, come up here. Deacon, Deacon, Justin, come get on my other side. Just shoulder to shoulder. He calls other people to get on board. He calls staff pastors. He calls deacons. Haven, get up here. Get on board with me. Haven's one of the biggest, I mean, greatest servers in this church. Get as close to Justin as you can. I mean, shoulder to shoulder. Squeeze in, guys. Squeeze in. Last Sunday, Haven, come home late. She served here all day long. Served in Tag Kids, served after church, had meetings after church. She's preaching in Tag Kids. She's serving all over the place. I'm ready to hire her. (laughs) I've already told her she's got a job here one day. We'll find Caleb something else to do. (laughs) She's dynamic. She led the prayer time in the youth service last Sunday night. She came home after that and she said, I'm tired. I said, welcome to the ministry. Because on Sunday evenings, we sit around and do nothing. I said, at least you don't have any emails you got to respond to. Amen. Get up here, Paula. So many things. Lifeline, musician. So many things in this church. Get on board with us today. Man. Bring it down just a little bit. Let's, Paula's short, so we don't want her to... <laughs> it'll, it'll get... Yeah, got some people on board today. Come here, Gene, get up here on board with me. Come here, Ashley, food pantry. We need you on board. We need your help. We need you on this thing. Come here, Becky, ministry leader, Joy. Come get on board with us. Get on board. Pastor Lee, come up here and get by Becky. We need the evangelist on board with us. I'm telling you, uh, this board ain't long enough to get everybody I'd like. I'd like to have a nursery worker, a greeter, a safety team member, everything. A tag kids, a elevate. I mean, we've got a maintenance team. Everything we've got, I'd like to get hands on this thing. We got enough hands? Got four and four on each side? You know what happens when you get enough people on board? Crystal, this is a good photo op. Why don't you get, get over there in that chair? There's going to be a good photo op here in a minute. <laughs> These people look good. Guess what I get to do now? Act 6 4. And it feels good. I don't have to worry about the vision and about the work of the ministry because I know it's being supported. I know there's enough hands on it. And now I can lift up my hands and I can pray and I can be in the word and I can be ready to do my part on this thing. But you know, church, what God is doing right now in 2021 is he is is calling men and women alongside me to stand 
and hold this thing. That's what he's doing. The question is, will you get on board? Will you support and will you uphold it? So the vision's now in place where I can go to the word and prayer. But listen, this isn't in place so that we can sit back and take a picture of that, Crystal. And look at that. Are y'all following me? This is not in place just so we can say, look at us. Look at our steady board. We're a solid church. Financially sound. Deacon, we're financially sound. Bless God. Look at us. Look at our pastoral staff. We've got a great team. We've got Father Wisdom (laughs) and Pastor Dummy. (laughs) Look at us. Look at us. We look good. This isn't in place so that we can say, look at Tag Church. Look at our worship. Look at our preaching. Look at our services. Let me tell you why this is in place. Come here, Ethan. Where are you? Yeah, come on. Y'all drop it down a little bit. I need somebody else. Help. Come here, Ed. Get up on the board. Take my place. Get up here, Ed. You are a strong middle man. So you three men. See, I planned this. I had this plan. Three men, two women. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I had... My name's Pastor Dwayne. I know you've been struggling. I'm glad you're here today. You ready to get saved? He's ready to get saved. <laughs> Guitar players finally getting saved. Pray this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, amen. He just got saved. Come on, everybody. Come on, he just got saved. This isn't for us to say, look at us. Y'all drop it a little bit. Ethan, watch your thumbs. Get up on that board. Get up on that board. Yeah, he's going he gonna to make it. It's not his first rodeo. Y'all need some help. They need some hands. How is it? How's the weight? Pretty heavy down on this end, ain't it? Y'all got the light load down there, don't you? Now take a picture. Everybody smile. See? This whole purpose was for this right here. Y'all getting tired? Need some more hands? Yeah, it's going to get weighty, isn't it? We're either going to have to drop it. This is what happens. Or we're going to have to kick him off of it. This is what's, that's what happens. Or we're going to have to get some more people to help hold this. Amen? Or the thing might just split in half. And that would not be good at all. You're going to take a hard fall if that happens. Are you ready to get off? Give it up for Ethan. I'm going to let him off. I'm going to let him off. Give it up to all these guys. Y'all just lower it down. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so very much. Here, I'm going to take it. Thank you. Y'all see the point? Get on board. Stand to your feet all over this place today. Get on board. The picture that I told Crystal to take, we'll put it on Facebook. Because that picture should be the picture of Tag Church. Everybody's got their hands on the vision. Everybody's supporting the weight of the ministry. Instead of just one or two of us constantly being the ones that carry it and drag everybody else along. Tag Church, thank you for supporting the vision. Thank you for being on board. My job's to help you find your place. If you're still wondering, where is it at? In the back of your brochure is a membership application because this booklet was designed for new members. Now, I don't want you to fill out the one side that has all the membership stuff. If you're already a member, don't fill it out. You that are joining soon in three weeks, you'll fill it out then. But I want everybody in this place, when you leave here today, go home, just put your name on one side. And on the back side, there's boxes you can check. And this page is called Ministry Interest Form. And if you're new to TAG or maybe you've been here a while, but you've just never found your place, I want you to identify places you would be interested in serving in. Check them boxes and turn that back into me. Get that back into one of our pastors. Bring it back next Sunday. Because again, our job is to equip you 
and help plug you into the right place. We don't want to just put you anywhere just to put you. I know a lot of people have a heart. They'll say wherever you want. We want to know what God's called you to. What is your spiritual gifts? What, where is your heart? What are you able to do? What's your personality like? If you're mean and don't like people, we don't need you to greet. We'll just not have greeters. Amen. We just, we just won't have greeters. Experience. What have you done before? Those are things you think about. I call it the acronym for the word SHAPE. S-H-A-P-E. Spiritual gifts, heart, abilities, personality, and experience. So if you're looking for a place to serve, I'm showing you, telling you how you can do that, okay? Right here. So, Father, we thank you for the picture we've seen today, God. We know that we can't do it without every person doing their part. We know as the saying goes, many hands make light work. And as your scripture says, every joint does supply. So help us today to be a functioning member of TAG Church. Help us to get on board, Lord, around the vision you've given to this house, the values that we've been called to support, and the work of the ministry that we've been called to be a functioning part of. God, I pray you speak to every person here today. Confirm what needs to be confirmed in their spirits. Show them what they need to see. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Before I dismiss you, let me just uh, say today that uh, in the back of this book, I, I didn't have plan to go into this and won't, but there is a lot of terminology. If you're newer to the Assemblies of God or newer to our church, you need to know about. Has our beliefs, has all the missions that we support. So when you hear things like BGMC, you'll go, what are they talking about? It's described. There's also a page on page number 19 with all of our media. Uh, from our website to our app to our social media to Right Now Media. Every one of you are being gifted with Right Now Media from the church. It's, it's been provided for you. We pay for it. And it is a, is it not, Jimmy? You were telling me you and your family was on that thing watching discipleship videos this week. So uh, Right Now Media is a great, great tool. There's more information about that inside this uh, book that's here in front of you. How many of you are on board today? Amen. Amen. I know that you are. I know that you are. Well, good news. It's not started snowing. So that's a good thing. Uh, bad news is it's going to start snowing. So get home and get home safely. Have a happy Valentine's Day. We love you. And we'll talk to you hopefully next Sunday, if not before. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, you can do so by clicking right here. And also, here's another message that might be of a great blessing to you. You can click right here. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.